if it comes person. up me it's him okay <laughs> whatever that means You're one person. all right awesome okay let's go ahead and dive right in today uh, we're gonna have a pretty good discussion we are going to do communion today also so if you have your elements go ahead your juice your your cracker if you want to get those go ahead and get them uh, just kind of put them aside and at the end we'll do them and so what we're going to do is we'll bring everything together I'll bless your elements as well as ours and then we'll go in and we'll do communion the way that we do communion which is you know I guess everybody does a little bit different ours is a little bit different so anyway let's go ahead and pray and then we will dive right into our teaching for today father we do thank you for this time that we can come together to glorify you to praise you Lord, as we reach out to all those that are here or that are online, Lord, that you would just put your blessing upon them. We would pray for John and the knee replacement that he Amen. just went through, Lord, that you would heal him. You bring him back. We pray for our sister Linda, who's struggling with cancer, Lord, and you know those issues. And we'd ask that you just put a, a just a blessing upon her whole family. We pray for Austin and Dominic, Lord, and their struggles in, in life. And we all have our own things that we go through. Lord, we lift up John and his leg. Yes. Lord, that you would just heal him. You would bring him back. We lift up all those in the Pelham Parkway crew and those out in the Bronx. Lord, no matter where we live, our minds and our memories always come back to the people that we grew up with, that we love. So, Father, we ask that you would bless all them. We ask that you would bless Lynette, Lord, and Amen. all that she's going through, that you would just give her strength and heal her. Pray for Paul and Lisa, Lord, that... I see he's on the preposes, the preposes of just doing something great for you, Lord. We'd ask that you fill his heart, yep. that you would just bring him back to you totally, Lord, that you would just fill him with your spirit, and he would come and preach the way he's supposed to. Amen. We lift up Carmela to you, Lord, all the issues that she's going with. May we learn to set those things aside, give you your sovereignty. When you do something, Lord, that is your sovereignty, and we don't need to get in the middle of that. We lift up Chris, who has lost his wife. Uh, Lord, no bigger hurt than that. And as you know, as we saw last week, where you cried when you were at the tomb of Lazarus. Yes. Lord, we know that you know and you feel that pain. Um, Catherine, Lord, we know that she is with you now. Just as you take all your saints home so that they may have communion with you, we also lift up Louis' grandmother on this Amen. day. 103 years old today, you would have been grandma. John Hannah Fuseli. Lord, that we know that you touch all of those people, that you bring them to yourself for your purpose. So, Father, we do thank you again for all this time. We'd ask that you just touch us today. Give us the meaning and understanding we need as we go through your scripture. Lord, let us grasp a hold, a little understanding of what happiness is, and that we open our hearts to that. And it is in Christ's name that we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So, let's talk about it. Happiness. What is it? It's a fulfillment that, that touches you inside and outside. A fulfill, fulfillment that yeah. touches you inside and out. Okay. Not uh, if you had to explain what happiness is in your life, yeah. what would you say it was? Sandy. My children. Your children. Sharon. My child. Your child. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Carmela. My children and my partner. <laughs> your partner. Hmm. Yeah. Louie. Um, for me, it's, 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 it's feeling healthy and strong that I can do for others and uh, allow others to do for me because I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. It's being open. Being a part of something bigger than yourself. Bigger than myself. Okay. And uh, just putting it back, giving back. Mm -hmm. John? Family and friends. Family and friends? Family. No puppies? Yes, of course. That's, that's my family. <laughs> 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 Those are my best part of it. That's, yeah, that's my support babies. group right there. <laughs> Carol. Nothing. <laughs> Jackie. Uh, Press my car to get it back. But I have, <laughs> yeah. I have realized yeah. that I've completely car, I been able to put trust in Jesus mm -hmm. and that he's going to do what he needs to do for me mm -hmm. because I'm going to do for him what I need to do for him. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I've come to trust that. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah. let's look at a biblical perspective of what happiness is and let's hold that up against what we were just talking about 
and, and let's hold that up against what we know. Angel. Yep. Right here. We got you right here, baby. No. Sorry. We have, a, we have a late arrival. No. <laughs> Louis box. <laughs> Again. That's like ten times. Uh, there's some sheets. Come on over. All right. So we what we're discussing here is, and and we went around the table and we heard a lot of things about our happiness is related to family, our children. Our happiness is related to how what we do for others and how we're our friends and how we're working in each other's lives. Jackie said it, it, it's it's her relationship with Christ that has brought her more happiness. Um, let's see what let's see what the Bible says about it. All right. First, before we dive into that, what I want to talk about is a couple of quotes that we have from some human people. I'm not going to give you their names, but I'm going to give you their quotes. The first one is, a great obstacle to happiness is to expect too much happiness. That's an interesting quote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the level? Where, where do I get to the right level of happiness? Is there a level? Is there such a thing as too much? We yeah. know there's such a thing as not enough, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But is there such a thing as too much? Yeah. And how do we balance all that? The secret of happiness is freedom. The secret to freedom is courage, to do the right thing, even when it's hard for us, right? To be without some of the things you want is an indispensable part of happiness. True. Because then if we get everything we think we want, where does our happiness lie? Right. In the material. In the material things. Mm -hmm. Not the, so we that know... looking at what you do have already in front of you. That stuff should make you happy. Correct. So we know, the Bible tells us clearly that physical things cannot produce happiness in us. It's fleeting at best, right? The new cell phone, the new car, it wears off. Oh, I got a maintenance? Oh, I have to pay a monthly fee? Right? All those things, then we it starts chipping away at that initial happiness, right? It's fulfilling a... a a physical desire it's, uh, yeah it's it, yeah it's fleeting it it helps for a moment yeah but then the the bill comes the reality, if you will. Juggling the reality. or the reality what, it's a good what one. you have and how you keep it to maintain it it dilutes everything else because now you're struggling again yeah so that's you a good way to put it you got. yeah that's a good way yeah. to put it okay the happiness of life is to is made up of little charities of a kiss or a smile a kind look a heartfelt compliment. See, those, all those things work together and speak of who you are down deep, right? Because those things are not for you. So happiness, if we can understand, when it's focused on us, can it fulfill that? Can it, can it produce happiness? A good. False happiness. False happiness. It's a good question, isn't it? Yeah. Like, how do this elusive thing? <clears throat> how do we find this? Because with that, it, I, I'm going on the assumption that we all want happiness out of, of life. Absolutely. Yeah, right. That's what we strive for. Well, okay. Hmm. So, have we been going about it the wrong way? Most of the time, yes, we do. All right. Let's 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 pray this prayer together. Amen. Let's pray this prayer together. Lord, I long to know and experience happiness in my life. I'm not talking about sh shallow pleasures. Those come and go, and the world and the wrong kind leave us empty and unfulfilled. The happiness I desire is so much more than skin deep. It's bigger than my circumstances and larger than my emotions. I want to be the kind of happiness that trusts you and follows you regardless of where that path leads. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So we know one thing. Happiness is a spiritual place, right? Yes. Physical can't do it. Yes. And I'm going to crush most of you right now when I tell you people can't do it. Gotcha. So those of you who are relying on others to make you happy, they are going to fail. 
people let you down. Yes, they do. Period. I don't care who it is. Your spouse, your children, yeah. your pastor, yeah. anybody. Best friend. Right? Yeah. Best friend? They drop the ball. We can't help it. That's how we are. Mm -hmm. So stop putting your stock in others that depends, your happiness depends on what they do. Because what happens when they do the wrong thing? We, get hurt. we go downhill. They, they drag us right down with them. Sandy, you know. Sandy, you know. Louis Box. When our kids are off track, right? They're battling something, maybe addiction, maybe something's going on there. We, we live and die with every failure that they have. Stop tying your happiness with that. Because number one, it's not going to help you. And number two, it's not going to help them. So if we really want to pull them out of that funk, then we need to tie our happiness to something that cannot fail, which is God. God. And support. God. It's just God. Listen, God says, I will never fail you. I'm always there for you. Too often we tie our happiness to things or to people, right? Yes. Let's go to Romans 4.17. He says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So we see one thing. Peace and joy are part of happiness. You got peace in your life? You got any sense of joy. Anything at all. Right? We talked a little bit about anxiety, right? And depression. And how crushing it can be. And it can be. Yeah. That's not supposed to be there. We may deal with it. I always put it like this. We may visit there. We don't live there. Right. As believers, as Christians, we do not live there. And too many of us get tangled in that web, right? And we lose strength, lose hope. And we, yeah, and we, we don't have the strength to break free, right? It's not a matter of eating, drinking. Not a matter of physical things. This is a spiritual matter we're talking about here. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, love, love joy, joy, peace, peace patience, peace, kindness, peace, goodness, peace, faithfulness, peace, gentleness, self-control. Self against yes, such there is no law. Beautiful. So, this morning my patience was tested. I failed miserably. But, but... It's okay to visit there. That's right. Pull it back. Bring it back. Don't dwell on it. Don't get stuck in it. Right? Yes, we all will go there. That's not a sin. The sin is getting stuck in it. Yeah. And letting it control, control you. Right. Just right. don't let it own you. Right. Don't, right. That's a don't great it. way to put it, Jackie. Don't, don't let, let it, it own you. you. Okay. John 16, 24. <laughs> he says, until now... You have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Okay. So our joy is tied to the things that God gives us. Or, as we like to put them, blessings. Blessings. I can contest to that. That's why I feel when we focus, on, focus on the blessings. And what God provides. It's beautiful. Focus on the blessings. Not on what you don't have. What, what you do you have. have. Amen. All right? Amen. Now, John 16, 33, he says, I have said these things to you, <laughs> that in me you may have peace. peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Stop letting the things of the world drive who you are and where you go. And Jesus says, hmm? what does he say? You may have peace in me. Again, it's tough to put these things into action. Right, Carmelo, you lost, you lost a dear friend. Yes. Yeah. You've been struggling deeply with this. Yeah, it's been a week I, of pain for him. So what we need to realize is one thing. You have no control over that. That is God's sovereignty. Even though your walks were intermingled, God has saw fit to call your home. friend home. Ka Kathleen, was it? Catherine. Catherine. That's God's decision. That's not yours. Your decision is, I loved her while she was here. I will thank God for the gift that he gave me. 
And that person doesn't want you to go through all this. That's what I told them. You are, you are actually tarnishing their memory by letting this affect you so deeply. We all grieve. We all grieve. Years old and I understand. Old and I've, I've, listen, I've it's talked harder. to parents that have lost babies. <laughs> yeah, really. I, listen, 49 years? Yeah. She was blessed. She had all that life to live and had a good life. Listen, put it in life. perspective, man. And never changed us. She was always a good giving person. And it's not up to us how long the gift is here. It's up to us to accept the gift, give glory, give praise in the gift, right? Mm -hmm. And move on. Keep going with doing God's will. Don't let it don't let it overwhelm you. You're just get letting Satan, you're getting Satan a foothold in your yes, life. You, you gotta stop that. Love God. Yeah, don't let don't let the darkness she there. She wants to see you happy. She was happy with you and me and yeah. together again. So happiness. Happiness. Remember what we're talking about. And Jesus says, I have overcome the world. In this world, you're gonna have trouble. You will. And it's listen, the bottom line when we realize what life is, it's not. If loss is coming, it's when. Yeah. And I think that's the way God intended it to be. And so when we go through that struggle, that difficulty, God says, are you going to rely on me? Are you going to become dependent on me? Or are you going to try to struggle through in your own way, right? And get overwhelmed by it, depression, anxiety, you know, then you start yelling at God, why'd you do this? Why'd you, right? You, the, yep. the hate thing comes in. Don't go there. That destroys your peace. Destroys your peace. Romans 15, verse 13, it says, May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace. The God of hope. So what do we always hang our hat on? We have hope in Christ. This is not the end. This is a mere stepping stone. You will see them again. Right? In believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may abound in hope. Who's, who do we lean on? God. God. God's Spirit. Always. Always remember. He he's indwells in you. He indwells in you. That's why he, that's why he gave us the Spirit. He gave us that Spirit. What did Jesus say? When he's talking to his disciples, he said, I, I must go. And he says, in fact, it's a benefit for you when I go because then the Helper will come. Yeah. Right? The Holy Spirit will come. Yeah. So. And it does come. Yes, he does. It and, does and, come. and it's amazing. It is. Romans 12, 12. He says, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. What is our main weapon as believers? To pray. Connection with God. Huh? Prayer. And if you're not doing it, you ain't getting why would prayer. you expect <laughs> anything to get better? Right? You're cut off all communications. What is the cornerstone of a relationship? Prayer. Communication. No matter who it is, it keeps it keeps that open, right? Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. See, we really don't even know what we desire. It's like you're trying to make somebody happy, but they have no clue what they want. That's a losing battle. And then you ask them, what do you want? And what do they say? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we're talk about that. I don't what know. Do what do you want to eat tonight? I don't know. Why did you cook for me? You didn't know what you wanted. <laughs> it's, it's, it's exhausting. It is. It's exhausting. So stop trying to, to, to figure that out because you can't, you can't do that for anybody. If they're not happy without you, they will not be happy with you. With you. So you and God have to have your relationship right before you can have a good relationship with somebody else. It's just going to be superficial. You can't make anybody else happy if you're not happy yourself either. First person you have to love? Yourself. yourself. Thank you. Ecclesiastes 3.12. He says, I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and do good as long as they live. Amen to that. Listen, you want to help? Help. Be happy about it. Put a smile on your face. Don't be miserable while you're doing it. Too many times we want to help somebody and we're frustrated with the situation. Sharon. And, and what happens? It, it causes damage within us, right, spiritually. And we don't know where to turn or what to do. Correct. Because we're, we're trying to do something that 
cannot be done. Right? They don't know what they want, but we're trying to help them. Right? I don't know what we do with that. They probably try to help people that don't know how to help themselves or don't or don't, or don't want help. Want. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they they're just trying to manipulate you or play you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah Philippians four four. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Part of our happiness is our contact with God. Our contact with God. <laughs> Rejoicing, right? God is good. God is there for me. I love him. He loves me. Always remember that, no matter what you're going through. Isaiah 12, 2, he says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Mm. I will trust. I will not be afraid. So much of the things that we do is driven by fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? Fear yeah. is torment, Scripture tells us. Stop tormenting yourself. Trust in God. He has ordained these things. What do you want me to learn from this, Lord? Where are you taking me in this? Thank you for the blessing of that person. I will see them again. Satan tries to steal your joy and your peace. Always. Why? Because those are things of the spirit. Yep. And Satan does not want you to have anything that is spiritual. He wants you to live in the physical world. He wants to live you in a state of anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. He wants yep. to keep you down. He doesn't want your connection to be with God. He will throw things at you yep. to keep you from him. And you know what you do? Rebuke that in the name of the Lord. Get behind That's me. All. <laughs> now, John 10, verse 10. Remember what we have learned. We just learned this. The thief comes, the, steal. The, the thief does not come except to, steal, to steal, steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. All right. Jesus is making a stark difference here. And he's saying, this is why I came. This is what you will have with me. This is why Satan came. This is what you will have with him. So what are you choosing? What are you choosing? The negative. Come the out negative. of the dark yep. into the light. First John 3, verse 8, he says, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Important <clears throat> understanding, scriptural, what he's saying here. What was the first sin from the beginning? Pride. Satan. Mm -hmm. Many people think it is Adam and Eve. It is not. Satan's original sin was pride. 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 He wanted to be God. Yep. In the garden, when they sinned, what did Satan use to tell them? God doesn't want you to have this because then you'll be like him. It's the original sin. It's continuing today. I had a lady that I was standing. <laughs> she was so funny. I had this lady from AA, and we were all sitting around talking. Uh, before we were going into the uh, jail. And she says, um, you know, it was quite a shock to me when I realized two things. Number one, that there's a God. And number two, I'm not him. Because <laughs> we spend so much of our lives in thinking everything revolves around us. And that's not the truth. It's like, you know, originally... You know, they thought that everything revolved, that earth was the center of everything, right? And everything revolved around the earth. They were shocked when they found out that the earth was just one of many planets that revolved around the sun. There you go. So let me tell you, everything does not revolve around you, but you revolve around the sun, the son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our Messiah. Amen. All right. <laughs> we tend to sabotage our own happiness or progress. True that. We think that we are not worthy. And in fact, we are not. But that's not where your identity lies in being worthy. Right. Your identity lies in Jesus is worthy. Yeah. Your identity lies in it's a gift from God. Right. Your identity lies in I don't have to labor anymore because the work is finished on the cross. And the only thing I have to do is to accept that and then institute that within my lives and let Jesus work and stop being in this, this fog that we love to live in. People don't know how to let themselves be forgiven. Listen, they ask for it, but they don't feel it. you know how many people that I've known that are like this? Things start going well, and they you know what they up. do? They blow it up. It, yeah. Yeah. I've been there. 
I gotta do it. Man. They blow it up. Self sabotage. Yeah, Self sabotage. Right. Yeah. Right. If, it. Yeah, right. Is, if, yeah. if alcohol is your problem, or or drugs are your problem, or even anger is your problem, mm -hmm. or something like that. If things start going well, or you're clean, you're doing good, yeah. you're going to meetings, you you know, right. life's getting back on track. Like Kim, Kim's done great. Yeah, I'm waiting for her to self blow up yeah. because that's typically what people do. Yeah. That it's. It's like waiting it, for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but that's 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 the truth. So Romans three verse nineteen says, "Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are that are under the law." that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, and by the law is the knowledge of sin. All become guilty before God. You are not worthy. That's not what it's based on. You don't need to clean yourself up to come to God. In fact, it's the complete opposite. You need to come to God to eventually get cleaned up. Right, and it, and and if you're you're the one that's saying, well, uh, you know, I do this and I do that, and I can't come to God because he's, you know, it's not right. And it, he already knows. He already knows. He's he's trying to work through that that stubbornness, that stiff neck of yours, and saying, this is not about you being worthy. This is about the gift that I'm giving you to accept it. You see, love has a way of changing us that we can't force ourselves through our physical to change. You may beat your 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 flesh into submission somewhat, uh, absolutely. But it will come back, and it usually comes roaring back. Yeah. Love, however, can conquer those things. What did Jesus tell us? I have overcome the world. That's what he meant. My love on the cross has overcome the world and the things in it. John fourteen verse twenty five. He says, "These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit." Whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I've said to you. Verse 27, here it is. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The peace that we get, you know where it comes from? Yeah. Jesus. He says, I give you my peace. You don't earn it. You don't have to strain for it. The only thing you have to do is accept it. Part of that is God is sovereign. He determines when and how things happen. And you have to be okay with that. If you're not, you're not a believer. The spirit within you will show you your error. He will teach you and grow you and try to move you closer to God. That's his job. He's the helper. Right? Many times we turn our ears off to that voice. We turn it off, right? Because we sometimes it's hard for us to understand. Sometimes we just don't want to hear it. That verse was in my devotional the other day. Yeah, that's a great verse, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, they're all great verses, but <laughs> I get stuck in whatever verse I happen to be in at the time. Yeah, something uh, interesting about that. You say that we need to listen for God. I, I think back to Elijah, how it was a still, small voice. Mm -hmm. We really have to listen in and try to hear it. If we don't try, we won't hear it at all. Well, think about you. Uh, if it's a whisper, what do you do? You mm -hmm. strain, you lean in to hear it. If it's a loud noise, you cover your ears. You usually back up, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or you tune it out. Uh, always remember, and I always give you this quote. It's a wonderful quote. It's the lies that are loud. It's the truth that's quiet. How about this? How about sometimes... I wonder, um, is it God that I'm hearing, or is I just, or am I hearing what I want to hear? Mm -hmm. you know, I get that's a good. That. That's I a good. Get confused on that right there. That's an excellent question. Am I, am I hearing what I want? So to how hear? do we? Scripture tells us to test all spirits. Te test where it's coming from. How do we test something? By the result. Where? What is this doing? Where is this leading? Right? Uh -huh. So you hear something and you say, okay, if this is God, then it's going to lead to what? What did Jesus just teach us? He said, it is Satan that comes to destroy. It's I who come to give you peace and joy and, and life abundantly. What is this thing doing within your life? Helping or hurting? Better or worse? If it's worse, then guess what? You're listening to your own voice. Okay. If it's heading you in the right direction, you're getting closer to God, 
you're feeling that spiritual connection that you should feel, yes. yes, that's where you're supposed to be going. And and it's almost like we have to do that. We have to test each step to see where it's going, right? Yeah. Like it's I'm a slow walk. Critic, you know? so it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's just too good. That can't be. That's not, you know. Because yeah, you don't think you're what, you're not worthy. Just, that's just what I want to hear. Yeah, you, know? you think you're not worthy. Yeah. It's like God really loves me enough to forgive all that garbage that I did. I feel like sometimes when you get when you have happiness in your life, there's always something that comes crashing down. To yeah. Oh, it will. Yeah. Listen, yeah. 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 but you have Listen. to remember: don't let it okay. grab a hold of your right. big toe and direct you the wrong way. Because when it gets a hold of your big toe, it doesn't want to. It's a spiritual it understanding. It it's a spiritual That's understanding right. of this. Whenever there is a victory spiritually, there's always something that comes against it immediately mm -hmm. following it. To try to take it away or diminish it. When I get hit trials and tribulations, that, it's always going to come. Spiritual victory. Yeah, I mean, okay, I'm looking. I'm looking look for what's coming. And she said she, she, she'll, she'll jump on that negative wagon. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you, it's not good. They're out to hurt you. They're out to. I'm like, listen, no, God's got this. Just let go. Do what you got to do. Regain composure mm -hmm. and just let. Fall but like back. you said, what she'll yeah. say is they're trying to do this. They so you are. Know what it, yeah. But you know yeah. what the thing is, it's it's their problem. Oh, that's not to tell you. It's theirs. Okay. It, they All right. Let's it. let's that's drill really let's well. drill down on that just a yeah. little bit. Okay. Because we I hear this a lot. Right. It they're they're trying to do this. All right. I just did a wedding. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Part of the wedding ceremony is that what God has joined together, let no man take down. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Who is he speaking to? Others. We think it's others. Yeah. It's not others. He's speaking to the two that just made a commitment. Right. Yeah. right? Okay. And what he's saying is, if you don't let others in to destroy this union, it doesn't get destroyed. Right. Right. Same thing with your happiness. Right. If you stop letting others come in and dictate how right. you think so and how you feel, well, then guess what? It doesn't happen. You are you are the writer of your own story by the actions that you do, there you go. right? By the choices that you make. Mm -hmm. If you make bad choices, if you let other people run your life and dictate who right. you are and what you, you feel and what you do, you. yeah, you walk on right. eggshell. That's on you. You're going to be very unhappy. Yeah, let it go. <laughs> As opposed to that, if you listen to God, God has said, "I shall not." Right. Right. And you hold fast to those things. Is it going to be easy sometimes? No. no. Is it going to be rough sometimes? Yes, Absolutely. Yeah. But you know what? When you look in that mirror, you know what you're going to say? The Lord's that's got right. this. That's right. The Lord's got I this. I believe in that. Yes. You, what? I certainly hope so. I, I, I certainly know. hope I so. My guns. My, All right. I feel like, you know what? I put my best effort in. I don't let the negative shit twist me. because Louis, I box. I'm box. <laughs> um, I just can't. You know? People yeah. like to push buttons. Eh? Okay. Yeah, people do. People do. Because if they're miserable, you know what? They want everybody yeah, to be like miserable. You yeah. gotta be careful what you pray for sometimes too. What mm -hmm. you say? Yeah, I'm driving down the road. I'm like having a bad day one time. And I told God he needed parenting classes. He <laughs> 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 you know what? He, he, he taught me a thing or two. There you go. Yes, <laughs> Paul. Exactly. Shalom in Hebrew does mean Shalom. it means peace. <laughs> yes. And the eternal yes. peace and the joy and life. Wow. Eternal peace is all between even. The midst of our yes to all believers in between the midst of our troubles yes talk about absolutely it, all right let's go ahead and for our reading for today I thought you guys would enjoy that thing about happiness I hope you got something out of it absolutely uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn over to John chapter twelve we're just going to do uh, eleven verses here I kind of split this up so we would have enough time to do that thing about happiness and also we're going to take communion today Amen. so let's go ahead and begin verse one. He says, then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus, who was one of those who sat at the table with, with him, then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped the feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrant oil. Now, uh, spike nard, it's a very common thing. Uh, matter of fact, Louis, so you, that, I anointed you, you with spark and spike nard. You got to stand behind that stuff. It definitely <laughs> saved lives. I was, I was in the hospital. Really, I asked him. I, I, give me my last rites because I was not making it out that yeah, day. We, uh, I was in bad shape. Yeah, we, an we anoint. It, yeah. it, 
it's it's something that we see that's uh, biblical. It's something that we see the there. The Holy Spirit walked in that day, and I, I woke up that next morning. I stood up. I walked. Yeah. And I was like, I just yeah, he was in bad shape. I was like, I got this. Yeah. I'm not giving up. I got this. So, so we're seeing anointing of Christ yeah. here, right? We're seeing how she's she's doing his feet. Why is such as emphasis on feet? I don't know. Because it was think? common practice <laughs> that your desk, you would wipe, you would wash their feet off. You would the always wash the dust off their feet. Plus, they're not tracking up your house. I remember yeah. doing that. But, what, but uh, besides that, besides that, in this era, what kind of shoes did they wear? Sand. 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 What, do you, what do you think their feet looked like? Oh Very dirty. Awful. Yeah. <laughs> they look like mine. So what <laughs> the illustration that we're seeing wow. here is... <laughs> This was the dirtiest part of their body. All right? When Jesus watched, washed the disciples' feet, uh -huh. what he was saying is, I'm washing the dirtiest part of you. Hey. I came to be a servant. Remember when Paul objected? Yes. Paul objected to his feet being washed because he knew what was happening there, right? He knew, he knew how it related. Okay. And so what did Jesus tell Paul? Uh -huh. <laughs> if you it. don't let me wash you, then you have no part in me. So all those things that you want to hide from Christ and keep buried in your heart, Jesus says, no, you've got to let me into those things. Because there's no healing without it. There's no cleaning without it. There's no change without it. I'm going to take my shoes off. Yeah. <laughs> now, verse 4. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? It's a fair question, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Isn't that a fair question? Like, hey, there, this could have been used a lot of money. Yeah. Well, why wouldn't we do this? Because I can sell things. It's not about money, monetary. So, okay. What, first of all, the person who's saying this. Is this what they were truly worried about? No. 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 They were worried about filling his pockets. They were. Let's, let's go, first we're going to go to Revelation. We're going to get to that point in a moment. First, let's go to Revelation 3, where Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne also, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, interesting points we're seeing here. We're not going to get too deep in this. So most Christians tend to believe that up in heaven, there are more than one throne. There's a throne where God the Father sits, and another chair next to him where God the Son sits. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. No. No? no. There was only one I throne. Yes, only one. Oh, I got you. Now. Okay? <clears throat> Look what it says. I sit on my Father's throne. It doesn't say how big the throne is. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father right. in a position of authority and power. He sits on the same throne. Okay. My father and I are one. one. Yeah. That's right. This whole God, this whole Godhead thing. All right. We'll, we'll do. We'll do a little bit on this, and, and we'll try to iron some of those understandings out. So he also says an interesting thing. He says, "I will grant to sit with me on my throne." as I also overcame and sat down on my father's throne. That's interesting for us. What does that mean? That we can sit up on Jesus' lap as well if we come to him? Let's not get too tied up in this throne thing, but let's talk about it more as a connection. connection. We're all a part of one another. We're all connected, or the body of Christ, right. or the temple, Right. That's what that's what scripture right. relates all these things to us. Do you not know you're a temple for God to reside in? The Holy Spirit dwells within you. When we realize that the whole thing, that this is about connection, this is about being a part of one another, that that connection cannot be broken, just like God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, that connection cannot be broken. For if that connection could be broken, 
then how how safe is our salvation? Right? So when Jesus is on the cross, was his connection between God the Father and God the Spirit broken? No. Can't be. It can't be. It's impossible. I know that you are always with me, Father. I know that you always hear me as he's, he prayed at the, at the tomb of Lazarus. Right? And there's many more scriptures that speak of this. But always remember, what we see, the principles that we see within scripture, sometimes we look at them and we truly don't understand them, like positional authority. It, it's, we, it's something that we need to understand. That's why we get God the Father, God the Son. That's why Jesus talks about my Father being greater than I. But also we see scriptures where it said he did not think it wrong to be equal with God. That's for another day. Just give you a little taste of that. Now, let's go back to our, our, our reading here. So spikenard was an expensive, expensive perfume mentioned in the Song of Solomon. Uh, all right, chapter 1, verse 12, chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, and in the Gospels, accounts of a woman anointing Jesus. We see it in Mark 14 and John here, John 3. Spark, not, spikenard symbolized the very best in ancient cultures, the way that a Tiffany diamond or a gold standard does today, right? Just to give us an understanding of this. Do you know how perfume is made? What is, what is the one thing that is necessary to make perfume? Alcohol. Anybody know? <laughs> Nobody knows? Pressure. Um, like a diamond, right? Like a diamond. Pressure. Yeah. It changes the physical characteristics. Of it. Yeah. So in the Song of, Simon, uh, Song of Solomon, Spike Nard is mentioned in reference to love between the bride and the groom. In the Song of Solomon 112, the bride says, While the king was at his table, my perfume spread its fragrance. Those words imply that, despite all the other fragrances in the room, only the brides would matter to the groom. The presence of spikenard represented their desire to have only the best to find their love. In Corinthians, we see this also, right? 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14 says, Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one who are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other the aroma of life leading to life. That's all that matters. Right? That's what God smells. I want to smell the fragrance of Christ on you. And if not, what does he smell? The fragrance of death on you that comes from sin. You can smell the dead that negative people. You can. Yeah. You, you feel the vibe. Yeah. Have you ever, you ever you ever have that person that walks into the room and immediately yeah. Yeah. it drains the whole room. Drains the whole room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Drains the whole room. I see I I don't know. I see Listen, believers are not supposed to be those people. Be believers are not supposed to be those people. That is a bad way to be. And it, it's all a lack of faith and trust in God. That's what does that. All right, verse 6. Go back into our text. He says, this he said, not that he cared. Remember, this is, this is Judas. This is Judas talking here. He says, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And he had the money box. And he used to take what was put in there. Did God know about this? Of course. Yeah, did you, yeah. Yeah. Then why, why leave the box in his possession? Test. Test. If the one thing that you struggle with, it's if God's going to help you try to overcome that, is he not going to put it in your face all the time? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Every second. Yeah. Every day, all day, every day. <laughs> all day, every day. <laughs> all day, every day. <laughs> It's like, oh, no, 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 go away. Yeah, right? It's like quitting smoking. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right? My wife goes, I quit smoking a hundred times. <laughs> but I only picked it up 99 times yeah, again. Right? So that one time it took. God's going to keep putting it in your face until you learn how to deal with it constructively. Or... He calls you home. So you decide, is that the thing you're going to struggle with the rest of your life? 
No. Is that going to define who you are? No. It certainly shouldn't. Matthew 12, verse 33. He says this. This is important. Understand this. In the context of what we're talking about. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. There's nothing worse than a wishy-washy person. Right? Either I'm with God on Sunday, I'm with the world on Monday, maybe I need God on Tuesday, something bad happened, the world comes rushing in on Wednesday. I'm walking with God. Right, what, what, what kind of existence is that? A horrible one. Jesus says, listen, either make, it, make the tree good or make it bad. Stop this nonsense. He says, or make the tree bad, and it's, and it's fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. We know the tree here is people, all right? Yeah. You'll be known by what you are and what you have and what you do, right? Verse 34, he says, brood of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? He's talking to religious leaders of the time. Yeah. Huh. How can you, being evil, speak good things? I, I think that's interesting because I know a lot of Christians who have bad hearts. They have a bad hearts and they try to speak good things and what happens it's it's funny it's disingenuous right it carries no weight no credibility for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks who you are down deep will come out it's like when you meet somebody new they're great for the first two weeks i can identify with that that's for sure right and then what happens you see that Their true powers. self comes out. Come out. Come out. That's what they say. A lie is always going to show itself. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks and people act. Verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of his hearts bring forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. That's human nature. That's plain understanding. Can people change? Yes. 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 I hope so. I hope so. I hope people can change. Yes. Otherwise, what's the gospel for? All right. John 8, verse 38. He says, I speak what I have seen with my father and do what you have seen with your father. And you do what you have seen with your father. What he's doing is he's, he's let, helping them to understand one thing. He says, you've seen the kind of person that I am. You've seen what I've done. That's because I do what I've seen and what I've been taught. Your father teaches you what? About life, right? Good and bad. He tells them, you've been learning from the wrong father because I see what you do and how you act and the way you do it, right? And it's easy to tell that you're not, your father and my father are not the same father. Yeah. It's interesting. It's crazy because sometimes we see a couple of things here. It's like, I've seen siblings grew up in the same house with the same father, with the same rules, and go two completely different ways. Well, what do we do about that? Pray. Pray! <laughs> Jackie, Jackie and her sisters. Uh, uh, it can work with women, too. It doesn't just be men. All right. Let's go back in. Let's go back in. Oh, Lord, help us today. Verse 7. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. The poor you will have with you always. What's he saying? Then there's always going to be the, poor. There's well, always going to be poor. Listen, I know, I, I know this. Deep in my heart, there's always going to be somebody that's in need. Absolutely. We can't meet every need, but we can meet some of the need. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're called as Christians to, believe, to, to do. Mm -hmm. Matthew 25. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I was food, you get right. When I was yeah. sick, you came to me. When I was in the hospital, you came. Mm -hmm. When I was in jail, you came to me. Mm -hmm. it's, all my saints have this heart and do these things. Mm -hmm. Right? All right. Can't keep it you got unless you give it away. So. Verse 9. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. 
Sometimes the miracle gets in the way of the messenger, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We focus Somewhere. too much on the result, except who brought the result, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 10, but the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. Hmm. If we can't, can't get to the messenger right now, what are we going to do? We're going to sabotage the miracle. What have we been talking about? We sabotage our own happiness. So the miracle that God has put in our lives, the peace and the joy and the love, when things are going too well, some of us have to blow it up. Micah 2. He says this. How terrible it will be for the people who plan wickedness who lie on their beds and make evil plans. When the morning light comes, they do what they have planned because they have the power to do so. Just because you can do something, does that mean you should do it? Yeah. No, not at all. Of course not. I mean, I could take that pen and try to stab somebody. I'm not going to do it. That's a bad thing to do. If you, if you want to steal a pen, Jackie's pen is very nice. Oh, be careful. Keep away from Jackie's pen. I found my pen. Carmelo's a cleptomaniac. You can't be helped. I did find the pen. The doctor's office, they pulled the thing back when we walk in. So we can offer them pens now. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, let's get the uh, elements ready. If I could get somebody to pass out the cracker and the, not you, Louie. You're going to spill everything. But, Louie, you barely, get, no, don't let him do the juice. I got this, watch. Nobody, nobody listens to me. That's how I feel. <laughs> That's how I feel. Yeah. So everybody, just get your get your juice together, get your get your cracker together, and we we're gonna we're gonna give thanks. We're gonna bless this. What do you guys got to do when there's a hundred people? You got to do this for. It'll take an hour. I'm not too far off the mark. Such a hot mess. Who's a good hot mess? Do not eat them. Keep them. Do not do it. Not you. What do you mean, not you? What's not me mean, Kim? Look at that steady hand. Like a surgeon. Yeah, like a surgeon. <laughs> you see, you see okay. Louie coming at you with a mask and a gown on. Run. There you go. <laughs> Who wants extra juice? No. I got one. All right, everybody's got it. Did you get one, Sandy? Yes. <laughs> We're just waiting for everybody to take their seat. <laughs> okay. Let us pray. If you put your elements in front, we we'll pray. <laughs> yes, she did find her pen, Kim. Yes. Oh, that's what she was talking about, not me. I didn't steal it. Okay. Father, we do give thanks for these elements. Lord, we'd ask that you would bless them for your purpose. Lord, that we would be found in you as we clear our hearts and our minds of all things all pretense. Lord, as we open it up so that we may come into a union with you. Father, we thank you again for this time. When he had given thanks, he broke and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you and do this in remembrance of me. So as a family together, let us eat this cracker. In the same manner, he also took this cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Well, as a family together, let's yeah. drink. Uh -huh.
Let us pray. Father, we do thank you for this time that we could come together and just, Lord, praise and glorify you. We we talked so much today about how you are our joy, you are our peace. Father, as we come into that deeper connection with you, we know that it's only possible by what was done on the cross for us. We praise and glorify you for that. We thank you, Lord, for that. We'd ask that you would bless the ministry tonight, that you would be there with all those who come out to hear your word. We'd ask that we would be an example to all those around us to love and honor what you have given us. Lord, to be a guiding light to those. Lord, to not be overwhelmed by the things of this world, but have trust and faith in you and understand that you are here for us and that you love us. So, Father, we do thank you again for all these things. It is in Christ's name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.